Hey everybody, Bryce Kuhn here with another episode of The Crowded Booth, and you know what time it is. It's the third Saturday in October, which means we have one of the biggest rivalries in college football that uh, the past couple years hasn't been there, but it's back, and I got a good friend on to talk about it. Alabama, Tennessee, we're going to talk about that game and why maybe, not just me, I'm not a Tennessee fan, but the guy coming on is, Tennessee maybe should be favored in this game. We'll talk all that and more on today's episode of The Crowded Booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. The Crowded Booth is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coon. Boom. It is Logan Whaley making his long awaited this is not your debut. You you've, no, you no. you it's 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 return. We'll say it's return. It's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. while. Long it's hiatus. A while. Long hiatus. We have Logan Whaley. Logan, first off as we get introduced here, uh I want to let the people know kind of who you are. Um you you are a diehard Tennessee football fan. Uh That's but correct. but you also um your day job is uh, your 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 lifelong hobby? No, no. Let the people know where you are. I know you're out in uh, God's country out there in Arkansas. Oh yeah, uh, I'm in Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is very very northeast tip. Uh, I'm a sports anchor and reporter over there, so uh, it, it feels weird calling it a day job because most of the job is like after the sun goes down, right? Because you know yeah. you're at pretty much every game possible. But no, I uh, cover a lot of Arkansas State football uh, in the Fun Belt, if you will. Uh, do a lot of high school coverage as well. So that is uh, my quote unquote day job that uh, sometimes keeps me working until about one o'clock in the morning. But hey, it's all part of the fun. I get to talk about sports. Much like no. you. Look, we it's people pay us to do what we love. And, and that's what we have to, I mean, that's what we love to do. So, you know, let's, uh, let's dive into this game because you, it's been well documented between text messages between you and I. Um, <laughs> I am Logan's emotional support when it comes to the Braves. Um, just in general, I, like, just in general, not, just not, in general. not just the Braves. Like I ever need, since, I need off the cliff ever since, um, uh, we sat down at four rivers barbecue in the summer of 2019. <laughs> uh, I've become Logan's emotional crutch <laughs> for sports and other things as well. So let, let's, let's get to this in all seriousness, because this is a big game. And, and I said it in the opening, uh, this is a game that has, since you correct me, 2016, 2017, the year where they're Josh Dobbs and uh, I think they still had Kamara, like it was a loaded roster and uh, really probably the best year under Butch Jones, which obviously you're still familiar with out there at Arkansas oh, yeah. State. Uh, and so the Tennessee fans that watched this just cringed and turned the video off or <laughs> shut their phone off or turned the at radio the off. Mention, at the at mention, the mention of the name. Yeah. The mention of the uh, champions of life. Uh, I'll say this. This game, for the first time in a couple years, it really has a lot of meaning. Uh, I think that this is not just a fluky Tennessee team. We've kind of seen Josh Heupel build uh, since he got there uh, a little over a year ago, which is still crazy, kind of the meteoric rise we've seen from Tennessee, and offensively. And you alluded to it, so let's get right down to it, man. What makes this fan base so excited? It's already a great fan base, but what makes them so excited kind of what about what's happening with this Tennessee offense in this program? I love you called it a great fan base. It is the most polarizing fan base in Ooh, all of college football. It's, it's most amazing. polarizing, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't doubt the passion is there, right? I mean, Tennessee fans want to see their program succeed. This is a huge matchup for many reasons, but one, it just feels like the third Saturday in October again. And, and you couldn't really say that the past few years just because of the dynasty that was Alabama football. It still is to this day Alabama football, but... A lot of question marks, right? Alabama has a lot of question marks entering this game. Obviously, the quarterback is Bryce Young going to play, and if so, how healthy is he? Then you also look at, of course, just the close calls that they've had this year, not only the Texas, but Texas A&M. I don't know what it is about the Texas team. Maybe it's the UT, and you know, if we're going to use that logic, the actual UT could maybe be the one to pull this off. That would be uh, the ultimate ammunition for Tennessee fans, if you will, but no, just the excitement is there, right? I mean, people saw on college game day just how uh, electric that atmosphere was for the Florida game. It, and Florida has had Tennessee's number for the better part of the past decade. And so Alabama has been sort of the same story. And, and just you look at this Tennessee team and how exciting they are to watch offensively. I think that is the biggest difference between this team and just teams of the past, right? Tennessee, a lot of fun to watch, especially on the offensive side of the football. So uh, I'm very, very excited for this game. I think this is the mm -hmm. game 
of this could be the game of the year in the SEC mm. if, if all bodes well. I think because yeah. you have the you have the atmosphere, number one. I mean, it's hard to win at Neyland. And then two, just the the quality of teams that are playing in this thing. I, I couldn't tell you the last time both teams were ranked uh, top ten playing this matchup. Yeah. I mean you'd have to go back to when you and I respectively were probably much younger. Uh, to when you know maybe Philip Fulmer was in charge uh, of a Tennessee program, and you look, this is a program in Tennessee that has been volatile over the past decade. I think that's fair to say. Um, as, as I'm looking kind of at the numbers right now and, and kind of heading into this game, you see the spread and all these different types of things. Look, I said this in our show last week, and I don't know how much you tune in or how much you watch. Like Alabama isn't you 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 commented on the Instagram clip like. Alabama isn't right now what Alabama was over the past couple of years. And so, look, and, and as you know, the rest of the SEC fan bases and college football fan bases love to jump in on that. Like, they love right. to latch on when Alabama is obviously down a little bit. But I think and it comes down to I had an Alabama fan come to me and say, hey, what do you think? You know, Bryce Young plays. What do you, what do you think the chances are? And, and this is kind of where I sit, and I kind of want to, you know, take the temperature of the Tennessee fan base in this, of and, and you, and obviously I know you have some family and some friends you've probably talked to about this game. If Bryce Young plays in this game, which as when we release this, obviously, you know, here on Thursday, we kind of don't have a definite answer yet of if he right. does play or how effective he will be, I think Tennessee still has a shot. Now, if he doesn't play, um, it's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of if categories that Alabama's gonna have to check the box on to win the football game that make it really lean more into Tennessee's favor. But do you not feel as scared in past couple years? Is that safe to say? Or it, with this, with how this program has kind of risen up and what Josh Heupel has going on, like does Bryce Young playing? Does that even matter to you? Do you still feel like this team has a really good shot to go in Saturday and make this a, a dub? I I think it does matter in the sense of I mean this isn't just you know insert five-star Alabama prospect here. I mean, this is Bryce Young, a a Heisman candidate, obviously this year going to be, in my eyes, he's the first quarterback off the board uh, Mm -hmm. in the NFL draft. You can, you can have the debate of if it's Stroud or if it's Bryce, but I mean, this is a guy that is quite literally one of, if not the best quarterback in college football right now. And that makes a huge difference. But in terms of, you know, to answer your question, if, if there, if it makes it more concerning, yeah, sure. Absolutely. It does. But you, you have to wonder if he is 100%. And I think that that at least, obviously you just hope he's healthy. And I, I don't think Nick Saban plays him unless he is absolutely fully 100% healthy. But just the just the offense, right? I think Tennessee fans look at this team, look at the Tennessee team, and they look at the offense. They, the defensive side, look, they, they are beatable on the defensive side. But it is a step up from where they were last year. And that is a big deal because you really don't need to have an elite defense uh, for this Tennessee team. You really don't because the offense to me is, uh, I believe it's overpowered hmm. with, with this offense. What this offense is, I mean, they're putting up the most yards per game in the country. Right? Uh, Hendon Hooker himself is a Heisman candidate, I think. Yeah. Especially, especially if you know Tennessee beats Alabama, I think you know Hooker's name for Heisman. I think the odds go up a little bit for him uh, as well. So, uh, again, that could be another debate too. But just the season that Hooker has had has been phenomenal. Especially, uh, you know, Tennessee has been fully healthy at the wide receiver room all season. Uh, the run game has been there as well. So, there aren't many holes in this Tennessee offense. But the question is, you know, this is obviously going to be the best defense that they've played all season. Alabama's one of the best defensive teams in the country, and that's just something that they've always been since. Uh, pretty much since Saban has gotten there and like just over the past decade, the past two decades, you know, however long. Uh, but no, I, I think regardless of if Bryce Young is is there and starting, sure, it is a little bit more concerning, but I, I don't think that's going to sway Tennessee fans a whole mm-hmm. lot just as far as, you know, the prediction of if Tennessee wins a matchup. I think Tennessee believes regardless of who starts at quarterback, that look, there there's as, as, as good of a chance this year than – in any other year yeah. in, in, in previous history. So uh, I, I think I think Tennessee fans are excited regardless. Uh, they're going to be excited regardless. And, uh, you know, talking with a couple of buddies, obviously with us being down in Georgia, we have a lot of Auburn fans, Alabama fans, and Georgia fans. And Georgia fans are going to be paying very close attention to this guy yeah. because I think the blueprint that Tennessee is going to use against Alabama might be the same one they try to use against Georgia. Um, yeah. I want to go to this because I really like this combination of Jalen Hyatt, Hyatt and Brute McCoy. Uh, McCoy, a kind of a literal bruiser. I mean, he's just a physical receiver. Yeah. And Hyatt, kind of a uh, you know more of a speed guy. 
And Alabama's defensive backs have been less than – they've played less than desirable. And so I think when you True. combine an offense uh, that is obviously, you know, number one in – or top five at least in every single category there is yeah. to have, uh, it's it's encouraging. Let's flip it because this is the thing is, uh, you know, the, the catch is you don't have to have an elite defense nowadays in college football. It's, it's great if you do. And obviously we saw last year what Georgia could do with their elite defense and Alabama has had, you know, makings of an elite defense in the past. But yeah. if Tennessee could very simply here, Logan, win the turnover margin, make one or two more plays, uh, I could see this game really, you know, going in Tennessee's favor. What, what kind of matchup do you think – what is this Tennessee defense really up against, whether it's Milrow or Bryce Young? Well, again, you, you mentioned tempo. That, that's going to be the biggest key of the game because this is a Tennessee team that is about as up-tempo as any team in the country. But looking at what they're facing against, uh, you know, offensively with, with, with Alabama, um, you know, I think last week was really one of the first big tests for them offensively. I mean, you look at who they played uh, over the past few few weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. You look at you look at the Alabama, or you look at the Arkansas game. Well, Arkansas's secondary has been beat up. Arkansas yeah. secondary, I mean, really beat up. I mean, you know, Arkansas has not been playing great. Period. Yeah. Uh, but but their defense has been the biggest hold there. So you really didn't need to do a whole lot to to beat that that secondary. Okay. Sure. Well, then you go to you go to A and M, right? With a with a backup quarterback, you know, at Alabama, obviously. But you know, you struggle a little bit offensively there. And then you know, Tennessee's defense may be a bit more attackable. But again, I think it all does come down to to that health, right? The, the health of the quarterback play and uh, just just the weapon. I mean, our, Alabama has weapons offensively, but mm-hmm. again, yeah, will they be able to control the tempo against Tennessee's run defense? I don't know. Uh, that, that 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 remains to be seen. Uh, but again, going to the offensive side of the football for Tennessee, I mean, you know they're going to put up, you, you know they're going to run as many plays as they can. They're going to go yeah. up tempo. They're going to try to put as, as many points on the board as possible. Just at, at, with you know, with like three minutes, you, you know, they they want to yeah. they want to score as quick as possible. You know, as as does you know most teams obviously. But mm-hmm. uh, just with Tennessee and, and just how many plays that they run, they want to dictate the tempo but they don't want to slow it down they want to speed it up so i think if they speed alabama up on the offensive side of the football maybe that could be something that uh tennessee looks at as as an advantage for this game yeah yeah i love that uh we'll take a quick break and then i want to talk about the battle of the line of scrimmage because that's a huge one here on the crowd of booth you're listening on radio make sure to hit that subscribe button and head over to the youtube page as well and we get to hear from our great friends at rigged and ready fishing and that is a great company because listen i'm not a big fisherman whatsoever uh, you can ask my co-host Ralph that. He has had to do undo too many uh, lines and, and fix fix lures for me way too much. But look, Rigged and Ready is a fishing apparel brand for on and off the water. You can use code CROWDABOOTH10 for 10% off your order at riggedandreadyfishing.com. And look, it's a great brand. It's a local brand here in our Columbus, Georgia area. Two cousins uh, out of Milledgeville and Columbus that have made this brand. And look, they not only have these fantastic hats, they've got some great stuff that you can use. Uh, You know, cold weather coming up, some great hoodies, some great uh, long sleeve tees and comfort colors as well. Make sure to check their stuff out as well. But look, we're going to come back here. And I think it's really important because, Logan, we were talking about battle at the line of scrimmage. If Alabama doesn't have Bryce Young healthy, they're going to put in Jalen Milrow, who, you know, he's going to be a good quarterback, in my opinion. He just hasn't – when you sit behind the guy who won the Heisman Trophy last year, you don't really need to play all that much. And there's a guy that I'm familiar with who uh, obviously transferred in from Georgia Tech. Jameer Gibbs is that, – that's one guy that I think Tennessee's going to have to circle the number. We can't let number one beat us. Like if Bryce Young is not playing – We've got to contain Jameer Gibbs because what he can do out of the backfield is a weapon in the passing game, what he can do obviously in the rush game as well. And this is, I remember this, I was watching a preview of the LSU-Tennessee game. And LSU kind of felt like if they could have success, it was going to be challenging the secondary of Tennessee, which is not, you know, it's not all SEC caliber, but it's average. You, You said it before. Does it worry you at all that Alabama may come out in a different defensive look and really try to expose some things for what Tennessee could do defensively? Because I don't think that you can just count on the fact of running Jameer Gibbs, running Jalen Milrow the entire game. You could establish that, but with how tempo this game, you're going to have to score points to match what Tennessee does. Absolutely. I, and I think that's what this game is going to come down to, right? Obviously, you talk about the battle up front of the line of scrimmage, you know, and, and you know, Alabama – 
you know, their offensive line has been good, but not elite, mm. honestly, this year. Uh, and, and honestly, you look at just, um, you know, with, with, with Milrow, right? Um, you know, someone brought up the, this point of uh, just the rotational system at, yeah. at Alabama, right? Yeah. Like the turnover at quarterback has been insane, where you can't just assume, you know, the backup's a scrub. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, someone mentioned that, uh, you know, Mac Jones, right, in his, his first start, you know, he had a couple big sixes and, and whatnot, and he wound up having a pretty decent Alabama career. Yeah, pretty good, uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty decent. Uh, so, you know, again, it's kind of hard to judge somebody off of their first start, but that being said, it is very clear, right, that Bryce Young is the guy. Yeah, you know, he is the guy to worry about. So, uh, yeah, Nick Saban, you know, he's been around the block a little bit. I think that he, you know, one of his biggest strengths is that he just he's able to, you know, game plan around the talent mm-hmm. that he has and makes it work. But, you know, you, you have to wonder, will they be able to to match that 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 tempo? Will they be able to score yeah. at the pace that Tennessee is going to score? Now, granted, again, Alabama, I think, will be able to slow them down a little bit, but. I don't know how effective it will be the entire game because look, you get to the late stages of the game and Tennessee's running this up tempo pace the entire game. That's going to wear a defense down. Alabama is the depth to deal with that, but you, you got to wonder, you know, okay, how effective will that be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's a very valid question because when you look at what Tennessee brings to the table offensively, like you said, they don't care about time of possession. Like they, they, that does not bother them. They say we're just our goal is to score every time we touch the ball and not field goals. Like we want to put six on the board every single time. Can Alabama match that? You know, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Does Alabama the same mistakes that they've made of shooting themselves in the foot? That's really why they could never run away with the game against A and M. If you looked at the box score of that game at halftime, you should say Alabama should be up by one, two, maybe three touchdowns. They just couldn't run away with it. Um, last question here for you because I think this is a huge storyline that maybe he's not being. Maybe I'm putting too much stock in it. Um, how do you feel about Josh Heupel's ability to manage a big time game like this? Like, look, you go on the road, you've played Pitt, which is a tough environment to go play. Uh, sure. You've beaten Florida, which is obviously a historical rivalry that's favored the Gators for the past, you know, however many years. But this is this is a little bit different. I mean, game day is going to be there again. Uh, you know what's on the line. You know that if you win this, and this is huge too, if you win this game maybe the Georgia game is not as a must win anymore because you could still get an outside look if, you know, if they, who knows, how do you feel like he's at his career to be able to manage a big time game like this one at home? Yeah. You know, that's a good question, right? This is to me, one of the biggest games of his career so far, right? Because, mm. you know, now this is, uh, this is year two for him pretty much of, you know, having his system there, having his, his guys in there. And you, you look at just, you know, I, I think everyone gives coaches a pass, you know, the first year for first couple of years. But with it, with the Tennessee team in, in you and I both know Tennessee's fan base, you know, yeah. not not that there's no free guy, pass. Right. <laughs> right? And, and, and to, def- to defend Butch Jones. Right. And, and mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm going to sidetrack. You. you look at the Tennessee coaches over the past decade and you look at the resumes and like Butch Jones has had the most success. I would mm-hmm. say like since Fulmer. And, and that that is wild to think about. That's wild to say. Right. Um, but Heupel has brought this program to what they have. not like, like Butch brought him to a certain point, like Butch brought him back to a certain point and mm-hmm. then it all kind of fell apart there. Right. And then you had, had the couple years there with, with, with Pruitt, which were just an absolute disaster, but Heupel has brought this, brought the excitement back in this program, but will he be able to manage a big time game like this? And, you know, honestly, I, I feel like the fact that he's at home, I, mm-hmm. I think that helps him out a ton because you have that that Neyland environment. But going up against Saban, it's it's a tall task for any coach. But for for somebody who you know coming from a, a school like like UCF to Tennessee, this this program so far it hasn't faced him. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see if this matchup this year with the excitement there. I wonder if he will. I, I've, I've got a feeling there may be a couple wrinkles with SC's offense that maybe we haven't even seen yet. Yeah, uh, which could because, be scary. Yeah, it, it, absolutely it could be. So, um, you know, that that would be the biggest thing. And, and you're right. I mean, that's a storyline that, that will be one to watch out for because, you know, just just the inexperience, right, that, that's there. And, and, you know, Heupel's definitely like, you know, this isn't his first go around at a big program, right? Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's going to be um, that's going to be the big storyline to watch for, I think. 
Yeah, it'll be huge. I mean, look, every single game they always bring up, you know, the Saban versus former assistants. Right. Um, and obviously Heupel doesn't fall in that category, but I think right. that it's interesting to see like a guy that has brought Tennessee back to national relevancy. Like mm-hmm. under Butch Jones, they were getting to a spot where like, hey, like this is a team that, you know, might be able to get to a New Year's Six Bowl. A- after last week going down to Death Valley and demolishing LSU, now I don't think LSU is that good. Um, yeah. But they went down there and did what you're supposed to do against teams that you're better exactly. than. Um, you know, they, they you're starting to see that uh, the CFP being attached to UT a little bit. Hey, could they make a run here? And I know that makes fans nervous, but yeah. it definitely is interesting to kind of see how that storyline plays out because, you know, Saban's been doing this a long time, and Bill O'Brien, you know, a good offensive coordinator. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I want to get last thing for here for you. Uh, what's your prediction? Honest honest to God prediction. Oh, you can man. be biased. Well, prediction time here. You got to give it to me. <sighs> Gosh, I see. This is the thing, right? Because I don't want to be on like old takes exposed, the freezing cold <laughs> takes, right? This is this is what this is what I'm terrified about. Because honestly, I I feel as good about this game than any game in, in the past. Like I, I couldn't tell you the last time I felt this good about the Alabama game. Mm. Um, oh, man, I just I just want it to be close. Number one, like okay, obviously if Tennessee blows out Alabama, that would be that, that's awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't. I don't think there's a world where that happens. Um, but I think Tennessee wins this one. Oh, and if Tennessee wins this one, I think it'll be somewhat of a high-scoring game. So let's just go ahead and say 38-31. I like that. I'm going to save my pick for our uh, pick that we release on Fridays. But I, I like where you went with, and yes, that is a cop out. Uh, but I like where you went with kind of obviously the high-scoring because Alabama seemingly in the past, you know, five years, five to ten years, ever since Saban's been there, obviously, over the decade, they've always, like, answered the bell. Like, you always were like, oh, gosh, I feel bad for the team that has to play them after they struggle. But this year they haven't, like, done that. Like, after the Texas game, they didn't really beat up on anybody. And and so, right. I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see, and Tennessee's obviously a very formidable opponent. But, Logan, appreciate it, man. It's glad to have you. Uh, we need to get you back on to talk Braves, uh, especially over the next couple of uh, days here. But I appreciate it as always, man. Let people know where they can find your work, uh, social media, and um, your address where they can send you whatever they want and uh, stuff like that. For sure, man. Uh, thanks for having <laughs> me on. Seriously, enjoyed oh, this. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Logan Whaley. That's W H A L E Y. Well, with the Y. A lot of people get that wrong. Uh, at Logan Whaley, K A I T. That is my little workplace there. So you can find me there. I tweet out uh, somewhat good content, right? If you're into Sunbelt yeah. content, if you're into the if you're into the group of five, right? Uh, you know, I, I follow the the Sickos committee. On, on Twitter, yes. Right? O- oftentimes the fun belt that that's in there, right? Um, it, cause it is, it's, it's, it's the fun mm-hmm. part of college football, but, uh, a lot of Sunbelt content, a lot of Arkansas state football content. Again, very weird. I cover Butch Jones now, but anyway, uh, follow me there. Uh, I, I don't know. You, That's maybe it. you won't regret it. Maybe, you won't, maybe you won't regret it. No, look full circle for you as a Tennessee fan to get to go to Butch Jones's <laughs> press conferences. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Logan, appreciate it yeah. as always. And, uh, Hey, listen, if you like the episode, make sure to let us know down below. If you're a Tennessee fan, which I know we've uh, kind of garnered a couple because I did an episode about how, Hey, can Tennessee win the sec East? Um, so we, we've got a little nice little following of Tennessee fans and they've showed up in the listens and mentions as well. So, Hey, bring it on because look, College football is better when Tennessee is better. It's one of the best fan bases in the country. Um, and I think, you know, over the past year or two, we're starting to see a little more parity in the SEC, which is a lot of fun. It's not just as top-heavy as people may think it is, uh, especially when you get down here into the SEC, meat of the SEC schedule. So, Logan, appreciate it, and we will catch you next time, obviously. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. If you listen on the radio, let the radio station know how much you love listening to us throughout East Alabama and West Georgia. That's all the time we have for today. Bryce Kuhn, alongside Logan Whaley. Tennessee, you heard it here first. Tennessee is going to win the national title, according to Logan oh, Whaley. no, no, no. <laughs> we no, thank no. you so much. How <laughs> in here and make yourself feel at home. The crowded boom is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coons.